ccsradio.com. It's a Thursday morning. We are glad that you're with us here today. We're glad today to welcome as well some of the uh, folks from the Indiana Regional Medical Center. Dr. Amanda Valia is with us once more, and uh, she has brought with her two of the residents from the first-year residency program at IRMC, Dr. Tambi Barathan and Dr. Marinder Sanga. Morning to everybody. Hi. Good morning. It's good to have you all with us here today. Our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mac, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest, Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. So the residency program at IRMC is uh, only a year old, right, Amanda? That's right. The, it'll be a year old here in July 1st. Uh-huh. And um, our residents have been here with us now for 11 and a half months. And mm-hmm. We're very excited um, about our new class is going to be coming in, and a new set of six residents. Each set of residents will be here for three years. So these residents who are here um, from last year's July 1st will now be the upper-level residents, and they will help to educate the next class of residents who are coming in. Yeah, the second class is coming in. Uh, how many will be in it, do you know? Um, six. There will be six more? Yep, six per year, and yeah. it's a three-year program. So at full complement, we'll have 18 residents. Wonderful. So, Dr. Barathan, let's uh, talk with you first and, and find out about what this first year in Indiana has been like for you. It's been amazing. I grew up here in Indiana, so it's been a blessing to be able to work at the hospital that I used to go to when I was little. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's been an exciting experience. As a family medicine doctor, we actually have exposure to pretty much every department in the realm of medicine, and so we're trained um, throughout the year in each department and then we also have a primary care clinic that we manage with our co-residents and our core attending faculty. Now how many people have come in and and their eyes went whoa I know you (laughs) when they've seen you there. Quite a few actually. (laughs) Yes. It's kind of um, it's a unique experience to see people that maybe were teachers or you know um, friends family members Mm -hmm. from before and to be able to treat them now it's kind of nice. Nice. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Dr. Sanga, good morning to you. How are you? Doing well. Good morning. It's uh, good to know you. Now, you're not an Indiana guy, are you? No, I'm actually originally from California. From California. State of, not PA. Yeah, state of, yeah. State of. A little bit different here than there? Um, it's The weather's kind of the same now. So, yeah. yeah. Are you northern or, or southern California? Northern California. You're northern California. So it's not all that different. No, it's not completely different at all. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of farming there, a lot of local communities and small towns. And everything yeah. Else. Yeah. So tell me about your first year here in residency in, at, at IRMC. It's been amazing. It's been um, really nice kind of getting acclimated to the community and meeting everybody and participating in local events. And everybody's really nice and it's been a really great learning experience. So there's a lot of different um, pathology we see at the hospital and a lot of diversity in the Mm -hmm. local community. You know, I I think the rural nature of of our hospital uh, is is interesting because it it gives you an opportunity to to really experience um, all kinds of different uh, um, medical situations that maybe you wouldn't in in a in a big city hospital. Maybe you probably you you probably would at some point, but uh, you get a little chance to get a, a little bit more in depth. I would think in in a small smaller hospital setting. Do you not? No, absolutely. And then you also get to kind of follow your patients um, and have continuity with um, even say generations. Um, so you get to really know your patients and understand what's going on um, with them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about you, doctors? Yeah, you get to treat the family. I think that's the most, you know, uh, redeeming part of this is, like, in a rural community, like, you understand that sometimes getting people to the hospital, getting people to the doctor, it's not as simple as, you know, getting on public transport and getting there. You know, mm-hmm. it's, there's certain barriers. And in family medicine, you get to treat the entire family, get to see, like, mom, dad, grandparents grandkids and you get everyone in the room together and it, it's it's good because you know you can you're you're able to take care of everyone and so it feels it feels great and then I think what I like most about IRMC is that it's a community based hospital and I think that experience sets you apart from like other bigger programs in different cities. Yeah, you're in a Pittsburgh hospital. You're probably not going to see the patient that you treated. You're not going to exactly. see them in the grocery store the next day. 
Exactly. Yeah. Dr. Value, when we talk about uh, the residency program and, uh, and the, the hopes and dreams when it was established last year, um, tell me about this first year. Did it meet those hopes and dreams that exceed it? Um, what's your impression of it? It's really been amazing. You know, our vision was to train physicians here so that we might fill the health care disparities in our rural areas. Rural health equity is really becoming something that's being more recognized nationally. And so the fact that the residents have come from all over, um, you know, I think, I don't know if you've not met Dr. Al Janabi yet, but, but he is originally from Iraq. Um, we have residents who are from right here in Indiana. We have some from California, from New York City. So we've had people come from all over mm -hmm. to come here to little Indiana. And they've really jumped in. They've, they've come to know our community. They've been involved in community activities. And whenever I moved my, my practice over to the office at Mahoning Medical Center, and that's where we have our outpatient office, um, I talk to my patients and I ask them to, to please consider um, being part of this process and, and being part of the education of these, these physicians. And, and they really embraced it. And not only that, but the residents also embraced what I find to be the most rewarding part of family medicine, and that's the relationship with our patients. And it's been so fulfilling for me to see the new relationships develop between my patients who I've known for so many years and our, our new physicians, and, and that's really been the most rewarding part for me. Yeah. Family medicine is a really good format for a residency program, isn't it? Absolutely. It's really been fantastic. We take care of newborns to geriatrics, you know, as Dr. Barathan mentioned, we have family physicians here at our hospital throughout the entire hospital. We have, uh, you know, folks in the ER. The, these guys rotate throughout the entire hospital. And so it really is a very diverse opportunity. And additionally, here in a community hospital, I tell them that, that um, you know, any procedure, any experience in the hospital, there aren't any other senior learners, learners who are more senior to them. So they take advantage of opportunities and, and even in some off hours to go down and, and check out what's happening in the ER or mm -hmm. to, you know, check in on a weekend and, and take a little extra call or, or deliver some extra babies. Um, so it, it they really <laughs> have embraced Delivering some it. extra babies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. even when they're not on call, they'll, you know, yeah. they'll, yeah. they take turns being on call. But, you know, if someone else is unavailable, they'll, they'll pop in and say, hey, you know. Is there any is there All any hands. work anything to learn um, today? Yeah. I've really appreciated about that about them is that that they really have gone above and beyond and they they genuinely are are interested in learning everything that they can. Yeah, they want to jump in. They want to jump in. That's a wonderful thing. Let's talk about uh, prim put your actual work here uh, and, <laughs> and uh, tell me about a primary care physician uh, and how important it is. Uh, for for patients to have one and and not only to have one on the roster. Uh, of their of their family issues, uh, you know, you've got you know, the fire department number, you've got you've got the ambulance service number, uh, and and you you've got your doctors listed and everything. But but to use them, uh, that that's the important part, isn't it? Absolutely, I would say like as a primary care doctor, um, your your PCP is the person that you have to go to in order to access the other realms of healthcare. Like that's how our healthcare system is designed. So the importance of having a PCP is it's like it's absolutely important because um, access of healthcare is a big issue, um, and sometimes people think you know oh I have this aching pain let me go to the ER well that's really expensive. Um, if you have a good relationship with your PCP, we're available all the time, and that's one thing that we've learned from our attendings like Dr. Valia, Dr. Basler, like a primary care doctor is always on deck. Yeah. And we're always approachable or reachable, and it's good to be able to, to help patients and help them realize, okay, you know, you don't need to go to the ER for this. Like, I can see you in the clinic tomorrow. And so being able to, to have access to us, to your PCP, is so important, and I think it, it helps deliver more cost-effective care if you have that relationship with your doctor. Yeah, and Dr. Sago, you're establishing baselines, aren't you, with, with patients when, when they're doing their regular PCP visits? Yes, absolutely. I agree with Dr. Barathan. Um, we definitely are kind of the point of care, and 
I'd like to describe it kind of like we're like the quarterback of the football team. So we kind of reg, um, coordinate everything that needs to be done throughout um, the medical process. So if they need to see an internal medicine doctor or if they actually maybe they do need to go to the ER if it's something as serious, if they've called us. And some patients mm -hmm. are reluctant to get checked out. So we'll go ahead and tell them to, yes, you need to get checked out. So we're actually um, accessible, like Dr. Barathan said, 24-7, and really know our patients well, too. So we don't kind of need to pull up a chart sometimes to see their history. I mean, since we've been following them for so long, we kind of really know everything about them. I know working with Dr. Valia, she always has – knows all her patients' histories, memorized their family histories and relationships, and that's really kind of encouraging to kind of know your patients really well and be able to kind of um, provide care right on the spot. Yeah, and you become a great resource uh, for the other doctors uh, that somebody might deal with, a specialist or, or even an ER situation. Absolutely. I mean, the trust that we see, like when we first started, the trust that patients have in Dr. Valia, Dr. Baszler, Dr. Stone, like our core faculty that teach us, um, that's the trust that we want to build with our patients moving forward because you trust your PCP before you trust anybody else. And, like, sometimes, like Dr. Sanga was saying, like, you know, um, they're reluctant to go and get that screening test or you're scared or you don't want to go and get the X-ray. Rather just, you know, see if you can, like, wear it off at home. Um, but if you talk to your PCP, they'll probably be able to guide you and, you know, help you. Boy, Dr. Valia, these guys are going to be so valuable. Uh, what a great resource uh, to the next class coming in, huh? Absolutely. They, they have had a lot of experience. They've come to know a lot of the, the medical staff. They know who to call. They, they know um, how the system operates. And those relationships that we talked about, it's, it's really been invaluable to, to develop those, not only with our patients, but with the community. And I, I like to say that here in Indiana, we, we take care of our friends and neighbors, and that's how medicine works. And so that's a, a very special responsibility, and, and we really appreciate the honor. Um, we're honored to, to be able to do that for the community. Yeah, you got a great first class of residents. And the second class is coming in uh, next month, as a matter of fact. Okay, we, we didn't want to do this little item of business as well. There's a, a, a sports physical clinic coming up? Absolutely. We have a sports uh, physical clinic. Um, clinic at the Marion Center office on Friday afternoon mm -hmm. uh, from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So uh, folks can call ahead to 724-397-5571 if they need to have a sports physical done. June starts the, the next year of sports physicals. That's the, the new window of getting your sports physical done for the year. And so anyone could stop by on those days. We also encourage everyone to be seen yearly by their primary care physician and to get a regular physical every year, mm -hmm. particularly those, those students who um, are the ages where they would need to have some vaccines. And so it's really important to not only just get your sports physical, but to, to be seen for your regular yearly wellness visit. Um, we also have opportunities for sports physicals at our walk-in clinic and at the urgent care if folks aren't able to make the Friday date. And we are also looking toward planning another another event later in the summer. Beautiful, beautiful. It's good to know that you're out there, you're helping, and uh, not only helping patients who come to see you, uh, but with the residency program, uh, you're helping train doctors for the future, too. Hey, thanks, everybody, for coming in. We appreciate it very, very much. Thank well, thanks for having us. It is our pleasure. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. It's 826 in the morning, and CBS Sportsman at next. Jake is in the newsroom. He's on the way, too.